Cremation is the future, and we are here for it. Jumping into the topic, death is an inevitable part of life that we cannot deny. It is the component of the life cycle of humans, from birth to maturity and old age, with architecture having its representation for each stage of life. Now, in choosing my topic, I chose a cemetery typology because I believe that there is a need to remind people of the importance of living and in an objective manner due to the ever-increasing population which is directly proportional to the crude death rate. So there have been previous studies done around cemetery typologies such as vertical cemeteries, underwater cemeteries, and tree burials having a common denominator of attempting to solve the lack of space issue due to the belief in preserving the body through conventional means. Which is not wrong per se. However, the thing that bothers me is that we have an already existing technology that solves that problem, which is cremation. In addition, cremation is on an increasing trend with the world collectively having above 50% cremation rate. Although in the Philippines, it is argued that there is no existing statistical evidence of its cremation rate, there is data to support that the cost of traditional burial is more expensive as compared to cremation. Knowing the attitudes of the Filipino people, I have an assumption that the Philippines will follow suit with the burial trend. Now that cremation has solved the space issue for any cemetery typology, now what? Comparing previous studies done by students throughout the year in designing cemetery typologies that aim to make space efficient or sustainable cemetery design or a facility that helps in coping with grief, there is an overlooked gap. Similar to how stories have a beginning and an end, the middle part is always overlooked, which is the funerary rituals. Rituals are solemn ceremonies consisting of a series of actions performed according to the prescribed order. For context, it can be when we attend the wake, socialize with the relatives, view the dead, and watch them be buried. Or it could be when we visit their grave or memorialize them. So why are funerary rituals important for the study? There have been studies conducted in relation to grief and how funerary rituals are able to alleviate grief due to its communal aspect, how it exercises the feeling of sadness and is a catalyst in moving through the stages of grief. So what is the connection between cremation and rituals? There have been claims that cremation fails to express the meaning of funerary rites and the mourning process due to its utilitarian aspect and, and that it suffers from a lack of spatial characteristics. And in turn, we found a connection with cremation, architecture, and funerary rituals. With all that information, we can establish a statement of the problem that cremation is the future and that it lacks a ritualistic approach that would aid in coping with grief. The goal is simple, to create a ritual space for cremation by adopting existing Filipino funerary rituals in coping with grief. There are three main objectives. First is to understand the funerary rituals in the Philippines and how to translate that into spatial design for cremation. Second, apply the human senses in the design aspect. Due to the Filipino traits of contemplation and nostalgia, I want to pander to those feelings using the senses. Third, apply technological implementation to the design. Because our setting is about 20 to 30 years from now, and technology is progressing, so why not apply it for a more dynamic architectural response? So this project is significant to three denominations. People that have experienced loss, people who are about to die because they will be able to explore places before their death, and people who just want to visit, maybe to contemplate about their inevitability or to experience the architectural style of that era years down the line. For the conceptual framework, there are three main processes, namely the problem, which identifies the parameter for the research process and also attempts to identify relevant conditions to apply for the research design, the analysis, which filters out relevant information and aims to contextualize everything within the design parameter of the site, and lastly is the conclusion, which is the output from the research inputs and a reference point for future studies. In forming the main theoretical framework, we will enlist the study of Dr. Yu in her study about Philippine funerary rituals and Dr. Rando's six hours of processing of mourning theory in contextualizing the grieving process of Filipino and to understand the transitional stages of mourning. Then we will include the theory of semiotics in translating signs and concepts into something physical or tangent with the attributes of senses and technology. There are many factors to consider when designing a cemetery, such as knowing its building laws, spatial prerequisite, and specifically for my topic, the cremation process. 
with the additional consideration of locating potential sites and considering internal and external factors affecting it. And lastly, which is the hardest part but adds flavor, is the design concept. To get things started, there are two main types of cremation, fire-based and water-based cremation. For the purpose of this study, we will only be focusing on fire-based cremation as it is easier to introduce to the average person due to its established public reception and affordability. In designing the cemetery, the study will refer to the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board on their rules and regulations, wherein it says that when considering a site location, it should be located in areas zoned for cemetery purposes, or if there is no dedicated zones provided, that it can be built in areas zoned as open spaces. Narrowing down the site consideration, the study looked at the statistical data provided by the PSA about the recorded deaths which showed that compared to the other regions in the Philippines, the NCR has the second highest recorded deaths given that it has the highest population density. Going to the site selection process, there are three potential sites having their strengths and weaknesses, with the commonality being that they are located within the NCR and are existing cemetery lots. In selecting the sites, some criteria should be met such as being located in a highly urbanized streetscape or residential zone, having access to natural ventilation, open landscape, and access to any mode of transportation. With all those criteria listed, the selected site is the Manila South Cemetery, having the highest rating. The site is very wide, covering 25 hectares of land, with good sight lines from all directions except the southeast side, with a topographical challenge of being in an elevation just above the sea level, and is casually surrounded by major roads and access which is beneficial and detrimental due to the noise being produced. Now before we jump to the pre-designing aspect, we should acknowledge that this is an existing site with real people buried, which begs the question if it is possible to relocate existing remains, which is yes. According to the Republic Act No. 289 under Section 13, the transfer of remains from one cemetery to another place is allowed as long as proper documents or permits are provided and with the consent of the existing relatives. In considering the spatial requirements of the site, here are the listed programs that should be considered about the existing cemetery law, spatial translation from the study of Dr. Yu using the theory of semiotics, and Dr. Rano's theory about mourning. And, affirming my design consideration, the findings from my interview with a funeral director were partially implemented such as the burial process and other consideration. Then for the breakdown, here are the architectural programming which shows the components of the research goal which are the funerary rites, multi-sensory design, and technological implementation, having each its own performance requirements and a conceptual vision of what the space could translate. Prior to reaching my final design, I want to express the previous design iterations and the journey reaching to this point. To start with, this was my first schematic attempt at designing my site, starting with the bubble diagram and the design consideration for the spaces in relation to the funerary rituals and theories. The original site was too large to manage, to which the lot area was reduced into something manageable given the research time frame. The formation of the spaces was reasonable at most. It took notes of the space required for pre-ritual burials and post-ritual burial with a few core theories being implemented. There were a lot of consideration from the site analysis, like reducing sound, reacting to the natural ventilation, and reacting to the surrounding environment, which was all good at first, but it became apparent that my initial design didn't have any meaning surrounding it, that I was designing for the sake of designing. Believing that my first set of schematic concepts was able to answer the research goals, I realized that the design lacked meaning that it was not cohesive enough, that it was detached from the user experience. One of the problems I faced was that everything was too far away from each other. There was no sense of direction going into the site and there were a lot of empty spaces. And it made me question, is this where I stop? No, it wasn't over yet. So I went back and reviewed my literature and findings again. Going back to the drawing board, overall I needed a concept before I decide on anything. It can be something abstract or something literal. Upon researching the scriptures and extracting symbolism from Philippine culture, I stumbled upon the concept of water as it was a means to cleanse a person both literally and figuratively, and in a Philippine context, provide a means of transportation and a source of life. Another concept I implemented was symmetry as it was able to provide the idea of stability and order. I reviewed again my architectural programming in relation to my research goals and simplified it into this denomination, 
presenting the funeral ritual experience through a procession, evoking the senses through materiality and framing devices, and implementing technology through movement and light, as it will serve as a basis moving forward such as vehicular and noise consideration, wind consideration, floor plan layout, and etc. Combining all those ideas, I was able to reach an equilibrium in combining reactionary function and symbolism. With all my cards set, I humbly present to you Limbo in Ashes, a ritualistic outlook to grieving through a cremation-based cemetery typology. Starting with my concept of water and symmetry, I initially thought of water flowing past an obstacle. I wanted some sort of centerpiece to play a major role in the identity of the cemetery, both as an icon and as a representation of the current Filipino culture. As the site plan developed, the plan pivoted in focusing on the pathways, as it will be essential in creating the idea of a procession. I also improve upon the positioning of spaces, how the parking is located before the entry, and how long a person should walk from the entrance until they reach a landmark. Based on the bubble diagram, the spaces were laid out, with the site having the church as its center and the surrounding spaces serving as support roles. Then came the implementation of water to heavily point out the core concept, with symmetrical paths from the entrance going into the church. An added feature was visual blockings, wherein the use of different framing devices were used to enhance the experience, such as placing an arc in front of the church, and many more. Then, in designing the columbarium spaces, I wanted to implement curves for the roof and a play on elevation to create the framing for this vista. After a while, the shapes were all forming together, creating a visual emphasis on the center elements. Overall, the idea is creating hierarchy, leading the eyes to their destination, and emphasizing the core concept, which is water and balance. We are now at the exciting part, which is narrating the experience. Starting with the entrance, there are two main passages. The first is for vehicular access, and the second is for pedestrians who either walk or commuted going there. Using the ideas of multi-sensory design, I played on the texture and visual cues of the architectural elements to signify the preparation of a journey. Walking from the pedestrian entry, the user will come to this area where the materiality and the positioning of the walls will show the users their destination, which is the church. This angle framing serves as feeding a person's curiosity about what is on the other side and being a beacon for direction both literally and culturally. After the person has walked from the entrance, they'll come across a bridge surrounded by shallow water, serves as a pre-transitional space from the world of the living going to the world of the dead. Walking further, you will be greeted by a rectangular arch which is inspired by the design of Carlos Scarpa. This serves as a framing device for the church which is the destination and symbolizes the start and the end of the journey. Furthermore, this is also where the deceased will pass through to be admitted into the cemetery. Approaching the church, the user is presented with choices for their activities. If their business is about something legal, then they should go to the left. If they want to pray, then go straight. If they want to visit a recently deceased person, go to the right. Starting our adventure, we have the administrative office where we can coordinate our inquiries, access payments, and, and a way to avail the services of this cemetery. In creating the form of the structure, I wanted it to play a supporting role for the central centerpiece in terms of visuals. The roof was sliced in with a mix of concave and convex shape as it can help with the direction of the wind flow. Its features include a maintenance office, a workshop room, and a public restroom accessible at the sides of the building. The construction of this structure is based on the usage of tin shell concrete in creating its curved form and a hidden gutter to not ruin the design exterior. Inside, the user is welcomed to the lounge area, having a view of the skylight. Next to this is where we register the deceased to be cremated or buried. Right beside the admin building is the open air lounge for people who want to immerse themselves outside. Just directly opposite to the admin office is the Wake Chaplet building, which serves as a space for the bereaved to mourn. Based on the interview and literature review, the structure should be able to accommodate about 50 people minimum, has to have a kitchen in providing food, and a space to celebrate the life of the dead given the nature of Filipinos. On the outside, we have this space, which serves as a breathing room or a space to conduct the other activities in relation to the wake. Just beside the wake building is the crematorium, Based on the cemetery law and interview, two waiting rooms should be provided to control the guests when doing their final viewing. At the center, we have the communal room where the furnaces are aligned 
and a skylight is provided to give off a meaningful departure before being cremated for both the living and the dead. Its added feature includes a morgue for preserving the body just in case the body decomposes out of nowhere and a transaction office in keeping the tabs on the cremation process. Additionally, as per design consideration, I brought a heavy emphasis on the air conditioning of the building as the room temperature can reach up to higher levels. Next is the church, which is the highest structure throughout the cemetery, reminiscent of Spanish urban planning. It serves as a beacon for anyone entering the cemetery and is where the masses and prayers for the dead are conducted. The design element applies the golden ratio, which has a meaning of being close to God, and the application of rigid and curved lines to show the relationship between man and God. It applies the different ideas of multisensory concept in terms of visual and audio senses in making the spaces more solemn. Next is the traditional columbarium area. This is where the users store the remains of the dead. It has six structures, each having a total of 1,840 niches. The design intent was to create a wave that engulfs the user, providing shade from the sun, and serves as a framing device for the eyes to be directed to the church. The wave design has a varying elevations and has a horizontal cut from the sky to invite natural lighting and to create a mysterious effect as the sun changes its angle. For the walking experience, at the side is a linear water feature for the purpose of rain catching and provides the effect of falling water. Some of the niches are designed to have compartments for storing memorabilia and a space for candles and flowers, so as to provide the idea of ownership and customization. Lastly, we have the technology-based columbarium, which is located below the traditional columbarium. The idea behind this space is to combine the idea of sensory and technology. The inspiration behind this stems from the columbarium design in Shinjuku, Japan, where they were able to integrate moving and light technology in making an intimate experience. For this columbarium design, it will use motorized components similar to a vending machine in carrying a transparent niche container to an apparatus where it can move from a three-dimensional plane. The intent behind this is to be able to stack the niches at a higher level, forming a collective viewing experience as the design plays with scale. The light, which is powered by individual strip light mechanism, is a means to create a meaning which can be interpreted by the users. To conclude, the study aimed in creating a cemetery typology in anticipation of cremation as a main burial method. In designing the space, the study aimed to understand the funerary rituals in the Philippines, apply the human senses in the design aspect, and implement technological aspects in enhancing the experience of the users. Overall, the study was able to create a design that applies the idea of possession in relation to funerary rituals, use the materiality and line of sight for the sensory experience, and showcase the potential of technology in presenting the dead. My recommendation is that this idea can be expanded or explored upon. This study can explore other religious funerary beliefs other than Catholicism, maybe a design that applies the beliefs of different faiths, or it can approach another branch of cremation, which is acclimation, as it is considered as an eco-friendly alternative. And with that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.